Just wanted to really welcome everybody and recognize, you know, sometimes we don't really put a lot into like what it takes to be here in the weeks that, that just happened. And now I want to acknowledge that. I want to acknowledge you for making God a priority in your life. And I don't want you to take that lightly. This idea of carving out time as a, as a day of Sabbath, as a day of rest, as a day of hearing from God. And to have, have experiences and moments where you can lean into his spirit and allow his spirit to touch us and to move us and to heal us and to guide us. Um, there's a reason why we gather corporately. There's a reason why the, the body, if you will, the body of Christ, the community, that we come together to encourage one another and to really to love on one another and to hear from each other, hear each other's stories, to be able to pray for each other. Because think about this. If you don't take the time to ask someone about their day, you don't know what they're coming in with. But I guarantee you, if you just knew what people were coming in with, it would change you and change them and change the conversation. Because all of a sudden, God shows up because you were willing to ask someone, how's it going? And they were willing to be honest with you. And then there's this dialogue that just happens. There's this exchange that wouldn't have happened otherwise. So it's like these divine moments after divine moments. They're always right there and they're present. But we have to be willing to step into them. And, and I find like, I don't know about you, but it's like as we were singing those songs, there was just so many little verses that were like just popping out to my spirit and just, just reminding me of his goodness. You know, and sometimes we just need to be reminded. And you can take that with the next week. You know, that one song, that one lyric, that one word from God's, from the scriptures, from that one encounter, from that one relationship. And you need that for that next week so that we can go back out in his name and to really just be on top of, like, why we're here. And we're, we've been in this series on James, and, and I want to kind of, like, just this is our final week on it, and there's one final challenge that I'm just so excited to share with you. Because James is, is, is starting a revolution. Like, I really want you to get that. You know, when James is writing this book, it's like the most practical book in all of Scripture. But if you really get the essence of it, it was right, it was right after Jesus was no longer here on earth, and not, yet there's a group of people that are followers of this way, the new way. But they were commissioned to go change the whole world. Think about that when we go in to make a little change in our lives. What if you were commissioned to go out and change the world, change the community, change a region? Right? And what does that take? And all of a sudden, James is saying... The very thing that happened then happens today. So in his word, when we talk about it, we have to really understand, like, it was about a revolution. It was about transforming people and nations. And if we lean into that, well, what is he saying? Like, what's so powerful about what he's saying is, like, how can I be transformed? Because it first starts with my relationship with God. If I am not transformed by the grace of God, I cannot go out in his power. And James is going and saying, the way that you do that is through the power of your word. We spent several weeks talking about our words matter. And there's power in our words. And, and the way that we uh, go about our day, the way that what comes out of us, living into our future, matters. And so, but today, our challenge is this, to develop our character in Christ. Because James is after something, saying, we can only go so long in our own power, in our own, it's like, I'm going to do this. I have this desire, and I'm going to just hunker down, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. We can only do that for so long. And we need Christ's power to come in and make that difference. And so, without his character, without his character, we're flawed. And without his character, we're not going to be able to sustain all the different things that life comes at us with. You see that? Life's going to come. And when it comes, will our character sustain it? Do you see that? It's like when I can, I can literally watch my character waning, right? And I can watch it steady one day and then not, you know, wavering the next day. But the more that I get rooted in Scripture, the more I get rooted in my beliefs, the more I get rooted in why I'm here, and I get rooted in relationships that build me up, then it's like when those waves come, then I can be centered. And I can sustain them because my character is solid. So if you look at discipleship, 
I want you to be thinking about this idea of like, what's your character like today? And then what's one way, what's one area that I can bolster that thing up as I leave here? I'm going to take this one thing with me. And I'm going to ask God to help this be part of my character. I remember um, years and years ago, it had to be 15 years or more, uh, my pastor had done a teaching and it was on uh, love is patient. And patience is a part of our character. And when he was going through, it was like love is patient, love is kind, all these different things. He's like, well, turn it around. And he says, like, when you're not being patient, you're not loving. And it broke me because at that time, like anytime someone ever talked about parenting, I was a young parent at the time, and I felt like I was failing. I didn't feel like I was measuring up. And it was like, you know, you kind of get to the place where you don't have the answers, right? And it's like, God, what do I do? And all of a sudden this thing was like, I'm losing my patience with the people that I love the most. And it hit me. I was like, I got to develop my character in this area because they matter. You know, what we do matters and what it impacts the next generation matters. And it impacts your family and impacts the families around you, impacts your colleagues. Like it's, you have to see this as the ripple effect, like what we do matters. In fact, I'll say it this way, everything matters. Everything you do matters. Do we live that way though? Maybe some things matter. Maybe this person matters today and this person doesn't matter so much. And that's us being human. So there's no, you know what I mean? Whenever I say this, it's a challenge, but there's no guilt in it. It's like we're real. But if we can keep developing more and more of that character, it actually just starts to come out of us naturally. And I'd suggest supernaturally. So, Danielle, why don't you come up? We're going to do the, the morning reading. Just to kind of set the tone for the James, book of James. Please stand as you are able for the reading of God's word. James 3, 2 through 5, 7 through 12. If you could find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you'd have a perfect person in perfect control of life. A bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small rudder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest winds. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. It only takes a spark, remember, to set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. This is scary. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. The tongue runs wild, a wanton killer. With, your tongue, with our tongues, we bless our God our Father. With the same tongues, we curse the very men and women he made in his image. Curses and blessings out of the same mouth. My friends, this can't go on. A spring doesn't gush fresh water one day and brackish the next, does it? Apple trees don't bear strawberries, do they? Raspberry bushes don't bear apples, do they? You're not going to dip into a polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, cool water, are you? May God add his blessings to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Amen. Thank you. Okay, be seated. Thank you, Danielle. So I'm gonna, you're going to hear a phrase that I'm going to keep repeating throughout the morning, but what's in you comes out of you. What's in you comes out of you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Meaning like, you know what I'm saying? It's a reflection of who I am. And sometimes we don't want to be really honest with ourselves. You see what I'm saying? Like it's hard to admit like, oh, I can make, because we're the best at making excuses for ourselves and we're the worst at giving grace to others when they do the same exact thing that we've done. And so it's like this idea of how can I continually get inside of me his character, his ways, his principles. And the more that we do that, we're building up this, this, this character inside of us. And so I'm going to read a couple of those same verses. Um, and I want you to focus on that we're made in his image. Okay, so with our tongues, we bless God our Father with the same tongues, we curse the very men and women he made in his image. Recognize that why developing our character in Christ is so central, it's the reason why we're here. The reason why we're here is to, to please God with our lives, to live a life that pleases him. And so we have to learn about what does that mean. So this very first thing is like, wow, wait a second. And I would maybe say it a different way. It's like when we come to church, we put on this, like, okay, this Sunday morning where we can sing songs and praise God and, and put on the face and say the right things, but then we go from here and then we live 
completely maybe the other way the rest of the week. And it's like the same thing with our, with our mouth, with our tongues. We have to start to see, it's like, wow, wait, people are made in his image. And so I want you to think about this for a second. I want you to think about that if you're a son or daughter of God, that's who we, like, as, as a Christ follower, that's who I aim to be. You know what I mean? Like, I want to behave and be like a son of God, because that's what I claim, right? That's my belief. So if you believe that way, you're also saying something similar. And so in that, how am I demonstrating that? When other people look at me, are they saying, wow, there's something about him. They might not say these words, but there's something Christ-like about him. Or are they saying, wow, he's a hypocrite. Now, here's the other thing. So take pride in how we live as a Christ follower because it does matter. But here's the other thing. The other person who's on the other side of our words, they're also a son or daughter of God. Created in his image. To be treated like as if the father were there and present. And I, I like to always give like little these little things for you to think about because it's like, it's so easy. Like I could drive home t today and, and have an argument with Diane, just like some of you will, meaning maybe not all with Diane, but you know. So you'll, you'll argue with somebody, you know? And it's like, whoa, like how, how long does this actually stick? You know what I mean? You might not even get out the end of the driveway and you're like <laughs> saying something like, oops, you know? And it's like, we have to figure out how do we keep it to stick longer? And I've always said this, it's like I look at Diane, I'm like, she's like the person who I probably hurt the most and love the most, right? Because when you know each other so much, if I say the wrong thing, which we all know what that thing is, you can hurt that person so easily, right? And it's, it's not usually out of a desire to do so, it's out of my own flawed nature, my own flawed character. And it's usually when I've had a bad week, it's usually when I'm not at my best, it's usually when I'm sleep deprived, it's like all these different things. That's why we have a holistic approach here. We want to make sure you're taking care of yourselves in a holistic way. Because I know, and you know, that when you're at your best, relationally, spiritually, emotionally, financially, all these different ways, when you know you're at your best, you show up better to the people around you that matter to you. And, and like I said, this, a lot of times we live our lives as if how we behave doesn't really matter. Like as if it doesn't have an impact. What if we woke up every day and said, you know what, how I live this day, what I say, what I don't say, what I act, what I don't act, what if I really stood and like, that's going to make a difference in the world. That seed that was just planted, I don't know what's going to happen with it, but that's where I trust God that he's going to take that seed and he might change a life forever and ever. And I had something to do with it because I showed up in his image. And so when I'm thinking about Diane, I was like, this week, I was in a rush, and I, and I, and I attempted, like, I'm like, she's trying to talk to me. I'm on the phone, and I'm in a rush, and she's trying to communicate something to me. And I'm like, honey, I, and I can just, I don't even know what I said, but I knew I was rude. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was just like one of those things. It's like, I should have just like, wait a second. The most important person in the world to me wants my attention, and I'm on the phone. Whoever's on the end of that line is not more important than who she is. When I'm at my best and I've got the character working in Christ because I know what I should do, it should be put down the phone, I'll either call you back or hold on a minute, and then give her my attention. It matters. I guarantee you, if I show up like that every day to my wife, we're not going to have a good marriage. Do you see why it matters? If it's once every couple of months, you probably have grace for each other. How we show up matters. And so here's another one. So I would say that was my character being flawed. There was another person in my life that it was like they said something and we had an interaction and it didn't go very well. And then for the next 20 minutes or so, I'm sitting there going, I should say X. Like I should go back to that person and express myself. I should say something. And what I did instead, I was a coward. And I just rationalized it. And I just kind of like dismissed it as if it didn't matter. And there's a reason I'm sharing it with you because it obviously still bothers me. And I didn't do anything. And if I even told you what it was, it's not a, it's not a big deal. But it is. 
When you start to see and live a life that says everything matters, because I don't know what this other person's holding. I don't know what my not going back to that person, what that's doing, until I engage in a conversation. And when I engage in a conversation, that's when God can show up. You see, like sometimes we live this life just in our own way, in our own strength, and God never has to intervene. But all of a sudden, when I step into a situation that's like, oh, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to step into this. As I take that step, that's when God shows up. I would say beforehand, it's the nudge of the Spirit. He shows up in that way. But as far as the empowering of like actually taking action. See, that's why I hate texting. I do it a lot, just so you know. Sometimes while I'm driving, confession, sorry. All right, voice texting, almost usually. So, all right, see, I had to confess that, I guess. Made new, baby. I need one of those shirts. Made new. See, that's what's beautiful about being made new. Every day is a new opportunity to be made new. What was I going with the texting? Help me out, seriously, what was I talking about? What is it? No, it wasn't driving. Oh, yeah, yeah, as a form of communication, right? Because you know what it does? It lets me off the hook. You know, ask yourself when you text and you know you should actually talk. Why? Ask yourself the tough, why do I, why am I, I'm, because I'm being a coward. We don't like to call ourselves that. But that's what I'm doing, right? I don't really want to hear what they have to say. I just want them to get my message. <laughs> and then you, you know how to use all those little symbols, too, to really get your message across, right? And it's clear as mud, you know? And we wonder why the other person doesn't, like, why aren't they communicating well with me? You know, it's always their fault. You ever notice that? It's like, so when we, when we think we should text, or when we go to text and we know we should talk, it takes something, and it does matter. Being able to, even, I, I would suggest in person is the best way, but I would suggest the next way is at least on the phone, because you can at least hear the tone. In person, best, because I can make eye contact with the person. I can see how is this landing. I can see how they're receiving it. And it actually puts me in a place of vulnerability. And that's why we hide behind our texting. Because I don't like to be vulnerable. But isn't it the best place to be? Until we get that as part of our character, that it's truly the best place to be. Because otherwise I'm hiding and pretending and I have to walk around with that weight. And we do have a weight around us. If, you haven't, if you're deceiving yourself as if pretending it doesn't, we have a large weight on us when we choose to live otherwise. So there's a sense of freedom when we take on his character. You know, and then I was laughing at myself because I was sitting there like, this is where the battle happens because the scripture says about you and I, it says you're more than a conqueror in Christ. It says that in Christ all things are possible. I won't pick up the darn phone though. The Bible for the, it says, uh, it says, I don't give you a spirit of timidity or fear. I give you a spirit of love and power and of a sound mind. And then how do I show up? How's my character? I show up as timid and fearful. I'll send a text. Some of us don't even send a text. We just withdraw, withhold. We'll just hurt people without silence. You ever do that? Just hurt people with your silence? So James 3 continues, it says, a spring doesn't gush fresh water one day and brackish the next, does it? What's inside of us comes out of us. So I always think like the best place to start whenever I think about character is about the fruit of the Spirit. And what I'm doing is I'm going to use Galatians 5, which is a very popular set of scriptures. But what I'm doing is I'm going to compare the, the NIV translation with the message translation, because a lot of us are familiar with the NIV, so I wanted to mix it up. But let me just read it to you first. But what happens when we live God's way? It's a great question. Pause there for a moment. Recall those times in your life when you truly felt like this is what God would have wanted. And I lived into that. But what happens when we live God's way? I shouldn't even continue. Because for some of us, this is the, this is the question. Because part of, part of our relationship with Jesus Christ is a surrendering. There's a submitting. There's something that says, like, you know what, God? Your ways are better than my ways. 
and I'm going to live as such. So for some of you, before you leave today, maybe this is it. This is the one thing you needed to hear. Because I have to convince myself that if I live God's way, it's the best way to live life. I'm convinced of that. That's why I'll put myself through the ringer. You know what I mean? Like those times of like when I'm not getting it right and then I want to get it right. There's a reason why I do want to get it right. And when I say right, I'm not talking about from a righteous perspective. I'm talking about from a submissive, like I do. I want to please you, God. Not because I have to. So wrestle with that. And then it continues. It says, he brings gifts into our lives. Much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others. And we're going to go through this. Exuberance about life. So I'm going to go quickly. Serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things. A sense of compassion in the heart. Even as I'm reading it, like, in, I'm going to read it again. In your spirit, which one of these pops out? That's what you're listening for. So I'm going to read it again. He brings gifts into our lives. Much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We de develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. So for, you, for some of you, you know the scriptures very well. So the fruit of the Spirit are what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Like we, we, we got taught that, right? There's nine fruits of the Spirit. And so we're used to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, right? And we just kind of, so now I want you to look at each of them. We'll put up the next verse. It says, with the one love and then affection, it's like the graph one. Yeah. So I put this up purposely. And Mark, this is when I would like for you to come up. And so, Mark's going to just play a little bit. I want us to take a couple of minutes and allow the Spirit of God to meet you where you're at. I want you to prayerfully consider which of these phrases, which of these verses minister to where you're at this morning. Allow the song, allow the music to just to move you. Lord, I ask that you would, in this moment, meet each person right where they're at in a very special, unique, and beautiful way. I pray that your word would resonate within our souls and our spirits and our minds. That we would just land on one thing, that your spirit would direct us just to that very thing that we need to hear this morning, here and now. And in that moment, Lord, help it to just get into us. Because this is the very thing that I believe that your spirit wants to add to our character. Wants to strengthen us. Wants the roots to go down deeper. So that when we're in those moments and our words, they're on our lips and we know we shouldn't say them. That we, we are able to control those things in such a way that when we speak, we speak life and not death. We speak words of affirmation, encouragement and not curses and blame. Lord, because it says in Scripture, out of the same mouth, we can't bless you and curse you. And out of your word, we're made in your image in such a way that, goodness, we got to be children of God who treat others as children of God. So, Lord, have your way in us. Help us to settle in our soul that I do want to trust you. I do believe that the best way to live is according to your way. Lord, if people are wrestling with that, I ask that you just minister to them in that area. Whatever we have right now is just fine. And I just ask each person just to bring it as a prayer to God and just to give it to him. And God, may you in turn meet each person right where they're at. In Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would minister to each and every one of us and that we would just have that one thing that you're pressing upon our very being and I thank you for the cross I thank you that 
This is where you made a way for all humanity and you changed the course of history just through this selfless act of love that took so much character to take on the world's humanity, take on the world's selfishness and in a way destruction, in a way ugliness. And Lord, you took it upon yourself so that it could be taken care of and dealt with once and for all. So that we could be free and that we can be set forth into this world in a way that because of what you demonstrate on our behalf, we could take that and make it part of our, our DNA, like who we are. And then that's how we'd live this life. And in that, your movement, your kingdom would go forth. And that's just amazing. So I thank you, Lord, and I thank you for this time. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to keep this here. And at the end of service, as like we'll, we'll close with a song. And if you'd like just to come up, like I've always, I don't know if you've ever done this, I always like to make permission for, for opportunities for you to draw close to God. And, and sometimes just coming close to this and touching it and, and declaring something or leaving something at the cross is a very powerful demonstration. So uh, we'll, leave, we'll leave some time. I'm just going to have some closing thoughts here, and then, uh, and then you can do that. I want to bring it back so, because like, as you see this, I want you to see like, back to the power of our words and what's in us comes out of us. And so in the Psalms, it's a beautiful little thing. It's a great word picture. It says in Psalm 141, it says... Post a guard at my mouth, God. Set a watch at the door of my lips. And I like, I love thinking about that. Like, um, if you, you, this is my silliness, but can you picture like a little sentry guy? Like, you know, you like sit there right on you, you know? And it's like, don't, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. That one's going to get you in trouble, right? And then, the, and then you got a good one like on the other side going, wait a second, say that. You know, say that. That would be really good if you say that. Or don't say anything at all in this situation. That's pretty good, right? And if we just saw that we had the, these little guards, these little sentries, but that's what the psalmist is saying. He's like, this matters. This is so important. And, and what I really want you to get is every one of the fruits of the Spirit that we just talked about, the one that you just named, all of them are impacted by our words. Do you get that? Like every single one, the character of Christ, the fruits of the Spirit, every one of them is either bolstered up or denigrated by, that might not be the right word, but by our words. Our words make all the difference, and this is why James is adamant about words changing the world. And so here's a, we'll end with this quote, N.T. Wright. N.T. Wright is a, a former Anglican bishop, theologian, historian, and I really enjoy his thoughtfulness. And he says this, he says, any pretense of being devout that doesn't result in a serious working over of speech habits is a sham. This is a central and vital part of what it means to be truly human. And when we talk about our character, we talk about being truly human, it's taking on the very nature of God himself. So, last week, we, um, we had a baptism and 2 Corinthians 5 says this, So then, if anyone is in Christ, he is a brand new creation. The old life has passed away. Look, a new life has come. That's why we have these shirts called Made New. Um, and so, can we hand, hand out this? Can, I know, but you can come on this side. So I did not fill them all out completely, so this, the logistics of that will be later. But if you guys could all come up, and we want to take a picture, so if someone has a nice camera or phone, when I say nice camera, anyone's phone is good. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe. so anyone that was baptized last week, come on up. Hold on, hold on. Can I get one? Can I get one? 
Sometimes it's hard to breathe. All these thoughts they shout at me, try to bring me to my knees, and it's over. So, like I said, if you want to just take some time to come up up front on your own, the rest of us, if you want to get going, you got to get going. That's great. Um, but I want you to take with you. I put up the action steps. Will just a couple of things to be reflecting of. Whether you want to choose a fruit of the spirit to develop and live out this week. That could just be that very thing that you need to bring with you. Or maybe it's meditate on God's word each day for 10 minutes and just allow his scripture, his word, to get into our being a little bit more. Or maybe it's to spend time with God in prayer and just talking and listening each day for a few minutes. You know, just kind of take it in and, and make that part of who you are this week. Maybe it's to fast and to pray one day this week. And this is going to be my action step. But some of you, if you've never fasted before, fasting is simply just, um, you know, choosing to give up food for the day. And, and what it does, it just allows you to really depend on God and trust Him as your provider. And it maybe makes you more sensitive to the leading of His Spirit. So whatever it is, that's why I always put other in there. It's like whatever God is putting on you, inside of you, drawing out of you. But, but to come to church and then to leave and, and just continue on as is, isn't why we do what we do. We come here so that we can leave transformed and go out and be the church more powerfully. And so let's take a moment and just allow them to sing. And like I said, if you'd like to come up, touch the pray at the cross, whatever that looks like. And if you have to go, God bless you. Thank you for coming to church.